some of the other things I've been playing. Uh, I played uh, for a... Play might be the wrong term to use, but I experienced the Matrix Awakens and Unreal Engine 5 experience that dropped uh, last night during the Ooh. Game Award announcements. Did you do the VR version of it? Is there a VR version of it, or is it just... just- like plainly. As far as I'm aware, it's only available on the Xbox Series X, S, and the PS5. Okay. Um, maybe there is, but I, not that I'm aware of anyway. So this thing is, it is a tech demo, um, but it does have like an interactive part to it. it it's kind of split into three parts. So the first section is uh, purely just this cutscene, and it's uh, Keanu Reeves talking to you. It's it's very uh, meta in a way where he's kind of talking about like everything to do with the Matrix, but then there's also kind of talking about like the marketing of like the new film coming out, and talking about the the this like experience and the Unreal Engine and kind of the stuff that you can do with it. And there is a real kind of like uncanny valley sort of thing going on. It does kind of like you're trying to look and say, it's like, okay, is that really Keanu Reeves or is it, uh, you know, like a face capture version of him? I recognize you you from Cyberpunk 2077. (laughs) (laughs) And so, like, for the first kind of minute or two, you're really trying to sort of like, okay, the eyes look slightly off, I guess, maybe, but the hair looks really good. Um, and then um, Carrie Ann Moss comes in and she's kind of there. And, and like, if you remember the the original um, Matrix where you've got Neo and um, Jesus, what's Lawrence Fishbond? Oh, no. No. M- Morpheus. Morpheus, yeah. yeah. The bit where they're in, like, the white the white room and like all the guns are going past and or like the whole kind of section where uh, yeah. Morpheus is explaining what I also remember is. that section from Conker's Bad Fur Day as well yes of course <laughs> naturally so there's a bit where like there's multiple versions of Trinity and then like they expand and they disappear and it's it's a you know it's an impressive tech demo her character model looks a little bit like as soon as you see her you can definitely tell that they're right they're actually just like virtually create characters her mouth is a little bit off but still you know, technically, it's very impressive uh, to look at. Mm. Then it goes into uh, a car chase sequence, and this is where we start to get a little bit of gameplay uh, in there. It's very limited, very basic. Uh, basically, you're being chased by agents, um, and you're shooting a gun out the back window. Uh, the gun will automatically lock onto one of the two front tires, and then you can fire away. Um, it it's not really like you know it's not any kind of like immersive experience but still it's very it's visually spectacular you've got cars blowing up crashing it's all happening in real time it's all happening uh within the actual city that you're playing in it's not like a kind of pre-built um like set piece a la like an uncharted or whatever uh and it's you know it's it's nothing engrossing in terms of, of the gameplay experience but still it's it's a very kind of like visually spectacular uh piece that's happening And then the third section is you're just kind of dropped into this big open metropolis uh, and you can just explore um, for as long as you want. And there's not really much to do. Um, You can't shoot. You can't jump. You know, this is not Grand Theft Auto uh, or any other game of that nature. But you can, uh, if you can see a car that's parked, you can jump into it and you can start driving around. Um, The driving is quite limited. It kind of feels like, you know how... um, Burnout, as much as I love Burnout, that isn't a game where you're really kind of focusing on taking those corners. You're just focusing on going as fast as possible yeah. and enjoying the pace and the experience mm. of like everything flying by. Or aiming at if, all the other cars if I'm playing it. <laughs> that as well, yeah. It, it feels a lot more like that than, you know, insert um, driving game of choice. So there's not much to do in regards to that, but you can do a couple of things. Um, there's some stuff in the settings, like you can toggle off the... Um, the, the traffic so you can go from like zero percent to 25 to 50 and i recommend having it about 25 percent because the, again the driving is a little bit stiff and it's very easy to smash into cars um and it's very easy to smash your car and then you have to get out and get into another one and because you can only get into parked cars there was a lot of time where i was in an area where there were no kind of parked cars nearby and it allows you to switch on like debug the debug cam so you can just start like flying up and kind of look down and see like the entire city and whether you're driving or whether you're kind of looking up like it is 
unbelievable how densely packed this city is and i was reading about how there was like 10 million original and copied assets that were used for this city and there's like 7 billion polygons uh going on and you know the when you're driving you're not seeing that kind of pop-up of of like uh buildings and th- stuff in the in the, the the background kind of coming into uh into like vision like it's it's a it, it looks as if you was driving in real life, you know, there's just kind of stuff off in the distance that just eventually catches your eye and doesn't just kind of pop out of nowhere. Um, when you're up and you're looking down, like just, you can see everything. There's no like kind of fog filter that's there to try and hide off in the distance. Uh, it's just visually, it is, it is a really impressive mm. tech demo basically of what the Unreal Engine five uh can do um because i know we had uh i can't remember what the name of it was but there was a, a an unreal like tech demo um maybe it was at e3 last year or one of those events and it was very like it kind of looked like tomb raider it was in this sort of like canyon area and it was yeah. very like that was really sh- kind of showing off like the geology and what they could do with rocks and you know just that kind of space and what you could do with it where this was just about like look how many fucking cars and people and buildings we can put in a city and how well this runs and yeah. now it runs at 30 fps and that in a lot 30 fps like there was a fair few times where the the game would slow down when there's quite a lot going on um but like the crash physics, like the cars and the, the kind of crumple zones, like I want a destruction derby out of this engine, you know, with like how satisfying the cars are in the way that they kind of smash and stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it is 25 gigs, which is quite heavy for a tech demo, but it's, you know, I, I enjoyed the, the kind of half an hour that I spent with it. Yeah, it's a very uh, much just about the experience. Like there's no like goals or... Or you know, there's, like- there's no goal, and surprisingly enough, like once you get past that initial bit with uh, with Keanu Reeves, because you don't play it as Neo in the the open world section, there's absolutely nothing there talking about like the Matrix or the new Matrix film coming out. Like at that point, you completely forget. Like oh yeah, there's a Matrix film coming out in like a week or two. It just it completely goes past that, and at that point, it really is just about hey, here's the Unreal Engine. So I guess it's kind of like first part, hey, new Matrix film. The last part, hey, Unreal Engine 5 tech demo, this is what we're going with. So, you know, it, it's it's very much like an exciting prospect of what may come in the future. Um, God knows, like, what developers can get the most out of this and, you know, what games would look like using the Unreal Engine to, you know, I don't know how far they can push that engine, like, to what this is doing. Um well, I mean, and, like, and the- scarily enough, just the last thing, like scarily enough, like if this is twenty five gigs already, and you know, it is a densely packed city, but like gameplay wise, there's nothing going on there. Like, I'm terrified about what uh, a, a digital version of a name your open world game of choice sure. that's kind of fully incorporated would be. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, so it'll be obviously it'll be the the assets that take up all that space, like you know, gameplay mechanics and stuff like that. That's that's megabytes. It's you know, it's it's very very little. The um um it'll be just the sheer number of assets that are just sitting in that thing and you're right about it'll be interesting to see what different developers are able to do with ue5 there are um obviously some people have got access to it already um yeah. you know there are developers who've got access to it already um one of the things i think that the company that i work for um found most interesting about unreal engine is how this sounds like a cheat um but like basically it can make games look really good much more efficiently um and it can make those games look good much more quickly so you know um when you work in unreal engine and we make games in unity and 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 in unreal uh, and in unreal engine and both of them have their purposes like both of those engines are actually very good at very different things they they have their pros and cons you know exactly. they have their strengths and weaknesses yeah exactly um the thing we, that we found with the UE4 is that, you know, one of the things that we liked about it is it all kind of just comes in one package. You don't have to worry about things like plugins. You don't have to worry about yeah. things like, um, you know, just getting lots of different things that you're going to have to support over time. And God help you if some plugin doesn't work because the person who develops it just doesn't want to develop it anymore. Um, but the other cool thing is that it will just push polys around and make lighting and... Uh, just efficient like they'll just efficiently put that stuff together and you can put it together really quickly uh, comparatively um so 
I think the interesting thing with um, UE5, and we've been playing around with uh, something called... Have you heard of something called MetaHuman Creator? Have you heard of this? I've not, no. no. Okay, no. definitely worth you checking out. So MetaHuman Creator is um, it's owned by Epic. Uh, it's going to be in UE5 at some point. Um, you, as an individual, can just go and play with it if you want to. Um, is it just like on the Epic Store launcher to grab there, I imagine? Uh, yeah, but I think it's the... It's, uh, the it's through the Unreal Engine itself, I think. Or maybe you can just do it through browser. I don't know. Well, I mean, because I have the Unreal Engine. So, because, like, I'm I'm doing a part-time college course at the moment, and I'm doing, like, 3D environmental design. Uh, and I'm literally, I'm working in Unreal at the moment. Um, and and you, you speak, you make a good point there. Because I, an idiot who's only just learning to do 3D design, I'm throwing all of my stuff into the Unreal Engine. And it looks pretty cool already. And I've barely done anything. So, yeah. It's, it's really cool, right? I'm I can like- speak to that being truth. So like, so like, definitely, you know, if you get a chance, go and have a look at it. I think you can look at it in a browser because okay. um, uh, the I believe a lot of the content of it is actually streamed. Um, and the cool thing with it is it's going to be a, a developer-facing tool where you can make fully formed human beings, and that is very, very expensive to do, right? Like, so we we we've traditionally never made games with humans in it for a real reason and that is just to make a human being walk across the floor is yeah. very expensive there's a reason if you play a lot of uh, indie games a lot of the time there's no other characters around other than mm. you yeah exactly like oh yeah. i wonder why you're always alone in those walking sims yeah. so um so basically um you know they so so you know this just this meta human creator stuff the stuff that we've managed to create with it, the stuff that I managed to create with it. Now, I do not have a creative or technical bone in my body, right? I managed to put it to put something interesting together. It's like the most impressive character creator you've ever seen, right? And the, the cool thing with it is that is that, that stuff and stuff that UE5 is going to be bringing in, I think, yes, for the higher-end companies where they're, you know, they've got, you know, you know, they've got banks of tech artists and they've got banks of just like, you know, programmers who just deal in like, uh, you know, and like mucking around with engines to push a few extra frames. At yeah, I, I'm sure Gears of War 6 will be the most impressive brown and grey game you've ever seen. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely. You will be able to see, you know, billions and billions and billions of polys by the end of UE5's lifespan. I've, I've no doubt about it. The cool thing, I think, for me, is that it's going to raise the bar again for indies. So... Already, you're seeing indies use UE4 to put out games that are way beyond what indies could have done 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Like, way, way, way beyond. And now, Epic's rolling out these features where it's like, hey, do you want to have a game with human beings in it? Because that's been prohibitively expensive for you up until this point. Yeah, okay, we can do that. That is really, really cool. I think, actually, funnily enough, although you know it will get some amazing stuff from AAA, I think it'll be the indie scene that we'll start to see the most... I think it's really going to change the way that the indie scene works. And I would, I would, I would say that, you know, people have been, always been, talk, have been talking recently about, you know, there's AAA and there's indie and there's kind of everything else in the middle is kind of getting eroded. Yeah. I think that middle is going to go away very quickly now. Like, Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Like, did you um, see any of that Ke- uh, Kenner Bridge of Spirits at all? Like, that was a, a yeah, studio, their, f- yeah. their first game, you know, they're not a big company, and... It's it obviously has its limitations and its restrictions, but still, that's you know, like it looks amazing. It looks amazing, mm, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I think you're spot on there. Yeah. But I also think it makes it clear the distinction between what's a Unity game and an Unreal game because Unity <laughs> has got to be worried. Like I, yeah. I re- I'm really interested to see how Unity responds to this because they're not they're not stupid. Like they're very obviously looking at this stuff and thinking to themselves okay, we were the number one game in town at one point, and now, like, you know, Unreal Engine is free. It's free to an ex- an astonishing level. Like, I think it's something like you have to make a million dollars or something like that before you have to start paying back royalties. Wow, something really? That's, like, that is, uh, that's definitely not the case of Unity. I like, would, that's insane. I would make $999,000 <laughs> and then take my game off all game markets. You know, it's such a significant amount of money. You know, it would be very, very difficult for you to hit that kind of threshold, as anybody to hit that kind of threshold. Um, more than that, like... The amount of like high resolution textures now that you can get for free through through their uh, inbuilt stores, this meta human creator stuff. The, uh, we just started playing around with Niagara, which is their inbuilt um, 
effects, particle effects system. Like, there's just stuff in there where you're like, how is this free? You know, well, this- I mean, there's a there's a, a really easy answer to that, and it's called Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fortnite is wacky, by the way. Like, I saw I saw someone like swinging around a spider band in it, and it just feels like they've crammed every entertainment property imaginable yeah. into that game at this point. Pretty much, it seems like every week there's a new like yeah. IP or something that they've thrown in there. Yeah, and- like whatever's launching in pop culture, they're just like, oh, we'll just chuck this in it, just chuck that in it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a Fortnite Matrix thing in a few weeks. I mean, I'm more depressingly expecting like Ed Sheeran to show up at some point. Hey, Ed Sheeran showed up in Pokemon Go, which <sighs> yeah, as, yeah, as, as a Pokemon Go enthusiast, yeah. I was confused by. But then when I think about it, like the people that play Pokemon Go are probably mostly like late twenties, early thirties people that kind of live in the suburbs, all of which is probably Ed Sheeran's target market. So <laughs> even if I don't but- like his his inoffensive blandness, the, there'll be people out there that really do. Actually, then they, um, I, I think they're doing like uh, in-game concerts or something on Fortnite. I think I remember hearing that that was yeah. a thing they were doing as well. Fortnite yeah. has basically turned into what they said Second Life was going to be all those years ago. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but with guns, <laughs> yeah, without all of the weird, weird dark alleys you can walk down in Second Life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you know what I mean, like a more sort of child-friendly version of what. Yeah, what, sure. Yeah, cause, yeah. Because yeah. Second Life was co-opted by weirdos. Like, there's no two yeah, ways it about it. Yeah, you, be- you're right. beautiful, sexually frustrated weirdos. It was yeah, great. <laughs> it was. It was so ahead of its time for what it was. It really was. Uh, it was the. Do you know what? You know what people people talk about? You know. It's funny, you keep seeing stuff at the moment about like, ooh, the metaverse, right? Yeah. And like, all I do is I just look at Second Life and I go, I don't want anything to do with the metaverse because it's going to be that. It's yeah. going to be that. Like, it's going to be advertising and weirdos, basically. Yeah. Essentially. I, I am concerned that one day I'm going to put my Oculus Quest on and it's going to just latch onto my face and yeah. I'm just going to be bombarded with uh, now you're in the whatever subliminal messages or not so subliminal, I guess. 